Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful spring day. Well, it is a really hot and sunny day here in Pennsylvania. It's 81 degrees and a thunderstorm is supposed to roll in in a few hours. So to start off today's video, I wanna get some hydrangeas planted over in the hydrangea room. I went ahead and ordered six Invincible Ruby Hydrangeas, which are absolutely gorgeous to go in between each arch. So let's plant them together and I'll tell you a little bit more about why I chose this shrub in particular. So I first saw these Invincible Ruby Hydrangeas over at my girlfriend's garden center. I think it was in 2020 when they were the Hydrangea of the year because she had this beautiful display of them. She might've had 10 or even 15 in stock and they were all in bud form. And I was so drawn to them in particular over the other smooth hydrangeas because the buds on Invincible Ruby are a really deep ruby red when they first emerge. And then they age to kind of that pink smooth hydrangea that probably most of us are used to. Something like Invincible Spirit too, which you guys know I love. So I just made a mental note of how much I love that hydrangea. And then when it came to plan out this hydrangea room this year, I knew immediately that I really, really wanted Invincible Ruby to have a special place in this garden and really to welcome my friends and family into this new area because I just thought it was so beautiful. I just fell in love with it, to be honest with you. So I went ahead and ordered six and you'll see here, I've actually ordered quart size shrubs. Not only does ordering quart size save you tons and tons of money, but in my personal experience, and also from what they just taught us over at Penn State, is that these smaller shrubs often catch up to their larger counterparts in three years time. So if you're not really in a rush for your hydrangeas to be at full size, you're willing to wait on them, and also maybe you're planting quite a few and you wanna save some money, go ahead and buy the quart hydrangeas because like I say, they will catch up to their larger counterparts in about three years time. And at maturity, these will be three to four feet tall, two to three feet wide, and they're just so wonderful. All the smooth hydrangeas are wonderful because they bloom on new wood. So if you live in a location that tends to get a frost really late in the season, and maybe you end up losing the blooms on your big leaf hydrangeas, Think about looking into a smooth hydrangea because they're just as beautiful and you know then you don't have to worry about losing those buds because they do bloom on new wood. You know one other thing about buying quart size shrub over three gallon or five gallon or even seven gallon now sometimes I see is that the planting goes really really quickly. In fact I'm using my grandma's trusty trowel to plant these and it's just going in so quick and easy. Well guys, it's so wonderful to get some hydrangeas over here in the hydrangea room. It'll be interesting to see how many hydrangeas we can fit into this garden at the end of the day. Also, lots of perennial bulbs going into this area coming very soon. And I also ordered a battery operated fountain for the area over by that snake's head for Delaria, which I'll show you this evening on the tour. So now let's go ahead and grab this tray of Snapdragon cuttings and I'll take one out for you and show you what the root system looks like. So I hope you can see here that most of them are fully rooted in. There's definitely maybe about 30% of the tray that's just getting going right now, but let me take this one out for you. And I can tell that these are ready, of course, by their top growth, but also because I can see their roots here at the base of the cell. And look at that. Isn't that a thing of beauty? And this whole tray cost us absolutely no money at all except just the potting soil. So these are ready to be hardened off. I'm not gonna start that until probably two days from now only because our weather is so erratic currently. But if the weather was stable, I would be hardening these ones off at this point. So guys, I really hope it helps to see these beautiful Snapdragon cuttings and to see them fully rooted in their cells. And once they're out in the garden and blooming, I'll make sure to show you them again so that you can really see this process from start to finish, from cutting to bloom. Here's a look at some other things currently under my lighting system. 
I have some dahlias for cutting. I have the mahogany splendor hibiscus, the bitter melon, and the dahlias back there. Down on this lower level is all stuff I started probably about a week ago. These are all my tender annuals. So we have Celosia here. Then we have Cosmos, Zinnias, and finally Gomfrina. And here taking over my kitchen window seal is the cup and saucer vine. And hopefully we'll be able to get that out in about a week and a half. Well, I got my Easter egg bread all done. I make one of these every year. And I think we'll head outside now to look at what's blooming in the garden before the storm comes. So here's what the main entrance is looking like this time of year. You can see I haven't really mulched yet and I've even regrassed the pathway here. So we're kind of still in work mode, but let's take a look at what's blooming and what's looking beautiful. So right here in the entrance, the service berry is in bloom. My husband has the fountain fixed and running behind that. And down below, I just have some nice violas and lots of alliums and tulips yet to bloom. Now, if we make our way down from the service berry tree and through the way of the fountain, we'll see some beautiful exotic emperor tulips, which are my personal favorite tulips of all time. A beautiful white and green tulip with a yellow center, a yellow that almost glows when you look at it. And these return fairly reliably for me each year. Right behind me there and on the right side of the entrance to the garden, I have a drift of Pueblo daffodils, which is quickly becoming my all time favorite daffodil. Here's one that's just opened up and you can see it's more of a soft buttery yellow. And then you can see they age to this beautiful ivory white color and they last a wonderfully long time in the vase with lovely fragrance. Over in this area, I have a split corona daffodil in bloom that's really beautiful called Love Call. And let me get you a close up on one that's looking really good. Now, isn't that just beautiful? And look, here's Rocky to join us on our tour. And I just have some more Love Call there with some Dutch Master that's going over now and some more tulips back here. Over in this area, I have some more violas. Behind that, I have the first tulip that I ever planted in this garden, which is Orange Emperor. It's the first tulip to bloom for me here in 6B Southern PA. And directly opposite from those tulips, we have this Candy Tuft. Some foxy fox trout, which I think is trying to come back from last year. And then behind it is a daffodil that I think is Silver Smiles. Let me know what you think and if you think this is Silver Smiles or is it something else altogether? And after we see that, we round the corner here to the new hydrangea room where we just planted those hydrangeas this morning. But look down here below at these beauties. These are the beautiful snakehead fritillarias, which I am absolutely in love with. I wanna sprinkle them around everywhere next year. I think this planting looks a little bit strange because the bed used to stop right here. This is where I did the extension, but nevertheless, they are just absolutely magical. Now this is the area that I didn't want to miss in case the storm turns out to be really bad. So what do you guys think of these Rubra Maxima Fritillaria? Do you love it or do you leave it? They kind of remind me of Big Bird or like a bird that Dr. Seuss would have drawn in one of his books. Let me get you another angle. Do you remember that Dr. Seuss book? I think it was called Sneetches on Beaches. And I think every character in that book maybe was one of these birds that kind of look like this with its head pointing to the side. So apparently there is a myth or a legend or a story that the Fritillaria is the only flower that did not bow its head to Jesus on Good Friday and henceforth it hangs its flower in shame. <laughs> I read that story in Monty Don's book Gardening at Longmeadow and I thought it was really interesting. Now, I'm not sure what I think about that story, but I do think this. 
these guys have a very distinct smell. And if you've ever grown them, you may know what that smell is. All I'm gonna say is, it could get you in trouble in certain states. Back here in the raised beds, the only tulip that started to bloom today is Apricot Beauty. I'm pretty sure that's the variety, but I'll correct myself on the screen if I find out otherwise. And you can see lots more of these early tulips budded up. Even this one's even starting to color up. So I bet by Easter, all of my early tulips will be open. Let's go through Hummingbird Way and check out Gracie's garden. The apple tree here has started to bloom. So over here in Grace's garden, a lot of daffodils are blooming. This one I think I showed you the other day, it's called Cum Laude, and I really love that one. I'll definitely order more of those this year, a beautiful peach center on that split corona. But just a scattering of all different kinds of daffodils that bloom at different times. So this one just opened today. This one's British Gamble. British Gamble seems to open with more of a yellow trumpet there in the center. And then as it ages, it turns more peach, like these ones here. Beautiful both ways, but I think I prefer the peach. And you can see a sprinkling of grape hyacinths in here. And now let's check out how the naturalized daffodils are looking. Here's a look at the daffodils that I'm trying to naturalize in the lawn. I would say about maybe a fifth of them are blooming right now, but hopefully it will be a little more impressive later on. Over here in this area, I have some species tulips. They're underneath a big limelight hydrangea right here. Well guys, I think that brings me to the end of today's video. I want to wish you all a wonderful Easter weekend with your family and friends, and I'll see you back here in my garden sometime soon. Bye!